This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We begin our worship here at the First Presbyterian Church of Warminster online with the sounding of the chimes. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord, be exultant before him. Our praise continues with this morning's prelude. Grace to you and peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to this virtual worship service at the First Presbyterian Church of Warminster. Our beautiful flowers today are dedicated to the glory of God by Sue and Daniel Murphy III in loving memory of Sue's father, Joseph R. Wheatley, on this, the 20th anniversary of his death, and also by Marie Morgan in memory of Christopher Morgan. Next Sunday, May 31st, is Pentecost Sunday, and red is the liturgical color, as we all know, for that special day in um, the church's celebrations. So I invite you, as you're worshiping with us from home or wherever you will be next Sunday, to wear something red or have something red in your home, such as flowers, uh, is a way for us, even though we cannot worship together physically, that we are worshiping in the spirit of the day of Pentecost together. We've been asked to pray today for Ramala Phillips' friend, Natasha, who has an aggressive form of cancer and is undergoing a new treatment plan. So please pray for her friend, Natasha. Also, we pray today for Carolyn Maurer and Faye Strohecker and the extended family as they grieve the death of their niece, Karen. Please 
Also continue to pray for Darlene, for Nancy's mother Marjorie at Masonic Village, and for Betty at Neshemity Manor, and all nursing home residents and their caregivers who are, remain at risk for contracting the virus. We have received an update on Betty from her daughter who has informed me that Betty is improving and that she has enjoyed reading your cards and your notes and letters that you have sent to her this past week. And also, as always, keep in your prayers those members of our church whose grief over the death of loved ones during this time of pandemic has been compounded by not being able to gather for mutual comfort with family and friends. So please, again, pray for Dee and Jim, for Sue, for Charlene, Carol, Elwood, Patty and Craig, and David and Linda Ludick. Our liturgists today are Cindy, Luann, Vincent, Nicholas, Sue, Laura, and Carol. And if you would like to be an online liturgist, please contact the church and we will get in touch with you. Our musical gifts today are offered by Kathy Worth Balkus on organ and piano, Dave Sathra on percussion, and Frank Balkus on flute and saxophone. And also in remembrance of all servicemen and women who died during wartime by honoring their oath to support and defend the Constitution on our behalf. And with gratitude for all veterans, both in times of war and peace. Today's musical postlude is offered in the spirit of tomorrow's Memorial Day observance. And after today's first scripture lesson, one of our Zoom chat groups will offer to the Lord a special musical selection. Let us now continue to worship the Lord our God with our opening hymn. Before turning to scripture, let us pray. Holy Spirit, speak to us your truth and show us your wisdom that we may know you more deeply and serve you more faithfully. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. I'll be reading from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, 
a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. There were 12 disciples, Jesus called to help him, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, his brother, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Matthias, Thaddeus, Judas, and Bartholomew. I'm reading from Psalm 68 today. Let God rise up, let his enemies be scattered, let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away as wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful, let them exult before God, let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. Sing to God, O kingdom of the earth and sing praises to the Lord. O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen. He sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. I'm reading 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 14, and chapter 5, 6 to 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert, like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel lesson is from the 17th chapter of John, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven 
and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as you've probably gathered, today is the Sunday. It's actually the last Sunday of the season of Easter when we remember Jesus' ascension into heaven. And I like to tell this story to every church that I've served because it just always... Uh, reminds me of the importance of Ascension Sunday. It also reminds me of my mother. My mother and my father raised me and my brothers in the Grace United Methodist Church in Burlington, North Carolina. It was established in the 1950s in the same neighborhood where my family lived. And that church is so similar to this congregation that sometimes I feel as though I've returned to my childhood when, I've, when I came here to pastor this church. And one of the main similarities between the two churches is the number of members who have keys to the building. And my mother was one of those who had her own key to that church because like many of you, she was the type of church member who was in the building every time the doors were opened on Sunday mornings, but also during the week, to change the pyramids, to organize the kitchen, to prepare for vacation Bible school, and the list goes on. Of course, there were many others there performing duties, such as mowing the lawn, sorting through utility bills, rehearsing the choir, writing and printing newsletters, and of course, cooking, serving, and cleaning up after church dinners. Sound familiar? You know who you are. Thanks be to God. Now one of uh, my mother's uh, most indelible memories was of a Saturday morning that had been set aside for cleaning the building for an upcoming fellowship event. And the phone started ringing in the church kitchen and my mother happened to be the one to answer the phone. And much to her annoyance on the other end was a telemarketer who had no idea that she had called a church because she asked to speak to the head of the household. Now my mother, like most of us, does not enjoy taking these calls. So she quickly brought it to an end by saying, well, Jesus is the head of this household and he's not here. And then she hung up. But then she thought to herself, why would a Christian say such a thing that Jesus isn't here? 
and even worse, to tell a perfect stranger on the church telephone, no less, that Jesus is not available to speak to anybody? Why on earth would she give up a perfectly beautiful Saturday morning, not to mention close to 50 years of her life, to be stuck indoors cleaning the church if she didn't think that Jesus was anywhere near? Now, when this happened, I was in seminary, so she called me up and she said, what have I done? But I reminded her that what she said was absolutely right. Jesus isn't here. That's what you and I say every time we recite the Apostles' Creed, that Jesus ascended to heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. So when we say that, we are proclaiming that Jesus is not here. That's what today's scripture lessons tell us. Jesus ascends into heaven in a cloud, and two men in white ask the disciples, why are you standing there staring into heaven? Now, both the ending of Luke's gospel and the beginning of Acts, both written by Luke, by the way, they give us a vivid account of the disciples watching Jesus ascending into heaven, obscured by a cloud. But we hear in other parts of scripture that this had to happen. In John's gospel, there's no scene of Jesus ascending up into heaven, but John's gospel does tell us that Jesus tells his disciples over and over again that he must return to the Father and that they will no longer see him. So in a variety of ways, scripture wants us to know that by necessity, Jesus physically leaves the disciples, that he is no longer tangibly available to them or to us as he was during his life in ministry and in the days after his resurrection. So that is what the church is celebrating today. We are celebrating that the risen Christ did not stay with his disciples. We are celebrating that we cannot see him or touch him in the same way his disciples did. So then if that is true, that Jesus isn't here, what does that mean for us? Why would we celebrate that? Well, by now you're probably saying, well, Christ is with us, not physically, but spiritually, which is true. Just a week from today, we'll celebrate the day of Pentecost and how the Holy Spirit was given to us to inspire the church to speak and to act with Jesus's love and power. But that's next week. We're not there yet. Today is the day to think about why Christ's departure from this place is important. That his, his ascension is more than just an interlude between Easter and Pentecost. It's a time for us to wonder why would scripture so clearly insist that this amazing love of God made tangible and visible in flesh and blood, this love that bore our sins in his body on the cross should now suddenly disappear and leave us in the world without that hard physical evidence of God with us. Where's the good news? in proclaiming to the world that Jesus is the head of this household and he's not here. Well, a big part of the good news is that by returning to the Father, 
Jesus is no longer confined to a particular time or to a particular place or to a particular group of disciples. You heard their names repeated in the first lesson that Luann read and sung by our Zoom chat group. Jesus no longer is Lord of just those few people. He's now with God in eternity to be Lord and sovereign over every time, over every place, and over every people. He has ruled over this world long before we were born and will continue to rule long after we die. And because of that, we can rejoice that the past, the present, and the future of his church remains in his good and mighty hands, not in ours. His work is not yet finished. In John, Jesus tells the disciples that once he returns to the Father, he will give us everything we need to accomplish even greater works than when he walked this earth. In other words, you and I are that hard physical evidence that Jesus is head of this household. And we're not called to stand around staring into heaven. We are called to do his work and to let gravity pull us downward to humility and to those who need the Lord's mercy and help. We are called to embody his presence and like those first disciples who gathered in the upper room to devote ourselves to prayer, giving praise and seeking his guidance through every situation. So the word made flesh is no longer in the world in a physical way, but we are and for a holy purpose. Jesus may have left this earthly existence, but he has not left us alone. There are more promises yet to be fulfilled, and that we will celebrate next Sunday. Now to the one who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or imagine, to God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Alleluia. Amen. Today's prayers are adapted from a prayer offered by Father Austin Fleming of Concord, Massachusetts. Let us pray. Holy God who created us, who sustains us, who calls us to live in peace, hear our prayers this day. Hear our prayer for all who have died, whose hearts and hopes 
are known to you alone. Hear our prayer for those who put the welfare of others ahead of their own and give us hearts as generous as theirs. Hear our prayer for those who gave their lives in the service of others. Accept the gift of their sacrifice. Comfort those who grieve the loss of their loved ones and let your healing be the hope in all of our hearts. Gracious God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember, we honor, and we give thanks for those who gave their lives in the service of our country. When the need was greatest, they stepped forward and did their duty to defend the freedoms that we enjoy. Help us to shape and make a world where all people will turn swords into plowshares for a harvest of justice and peace. This we pray in the holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.